Absolutely. We've seen Deshaun Jackson not even a week prior to this go through the same thing in the NFL. We've seen the Cannon go through it. But this is a conversation that's been happening through the music industry, whether it be conversations formulated in a different way, the Illuminati, mm-hmm. um, whatever it may be. But we all know who owns the music industry, who owns the labels, who owns the publishing and things like that. Exactly. Um, they don't like us to talk about it. So can you kind of just dive into your experiences within the music industry and how this correlates to what everything we're seeing right now? Yeah, man, you know, it, it, it's it's real. You know, I we did a we did a uh, an episode on our, on my podcast, Truth Talks, where we talked about a a secret meeting that was that was held in regards of the direction that hip hop would go, mm-hmm. and um, because you know uh, the some of the major labels were investing in private prisons. So, so, so you know, we we you know we we spoke about how they made sure that gangster rap was pushed to the forefront more than any other genre of hip hop at the time to basically influence the youth into committing crimes and living a gangster life or a thug life or whatnot. You know what I'm saying? We 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 were all basically tricked, man. You know what I'm saying? What what we we thought we were expressing ourselves and getting frustration off our our chest about the way we were forced to live in these ghettos and in the slums. And at the same time, they're the ones that took our lifestyles and they glamorized it. Mm-hmm. They, 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 they put the lights and the cameras behind it and said, look, like, like this looks attracting, don't it? You know what I'm saying? But we were simply like, yo, this is where we come from. This is what we had to go through. It wasn't the fact that we were glamorizing it because in a lot of our songs, we told people like, you know, we glad we're not living that life no more. It wasn't fun. You know what I'm saying? We we was forced to live that way. But when we got up out of it, we started to try like to turn around and like do positive things. And, you know, that's one thing I feel like people need to know. It was, you know, when they asked what happened to all the conscious rappers, that's what happened to them. Mm-hmm. Because they made it a point to make sure that those kind of messages and this kind of rap music would not be acceptable to the fans anymore. If it's not violent, we're not going to push it. If it, it. if it has a message, if you're trying to educate the people, we're not having it. We want them listening to strictly nonsense. Nothing that's going to be dangerous to us. We don't want any uprisings because they they understood the power that Tupac possessed. Mm-hmm. That's why they were probably happy when he was gone because it was like we almost had a Malcolm X on a way bigger level right. behind hip hop. It would have been times 10. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it was like, so after Tupac, it was basically like, okay, we dodged that. We need to change it, get rid of conscious rap. So what they do Let's make sure these dudes get 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 them niggas a couple of dollars. Mm-hmm. Give them a couple of dollars, make them forget that it's even a problem. You know what I'm saying? And that's basically what happened. They started giving giving us all this money, and you know, people started to to. It was no longer about the struggle; it was about me. It's all about me. You know what I'm saying? And that's where we at now. And that's why no messages get through the youth right now because. Uh, the record industry has has programmed this this way of uh music getting out to the to the youth to where it's only one genre of hip hop that's reaching them. Mm-hmm. They've narrowed it down. You have to sound like what's on the radio right now mm-hmm. and talk about what they're talking about in order to see any success. That's 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 bottom line, with a few exceptions. You know what I'm saying? So it it's like we we we've been going through this like. Like I said, Nick Cannon wasn't really saying nothing wrong. He just said something that they didn't want to hear, bottom line. Yeah. Right. Could you speak about that? You talked about, you know, I actually listened to that conversation today, and you also talked about, you know, the rappers promoting criminality, but can you talk about them promoting the drug use, too, and pushing that on people and now wanting kids to try lean, Xanax, and all types of Molly and stuff like that? Yeah, yeah, man. It, it's It's like it's like crazy the the level of deaths we see from like you, you know these drug overdoses and it's like 
it's like and some of these and some of these young some of these young kids these young artists they they have pre-existing mental um you know issues mm -hmm. you know and these labels you know these labels they don't they don't take any of that into consideration when they're giving them these deals and get them all this money and they, they're not they're not guiding them at all there is no there is no there is no guidance there is no blueprint it's just like it's all over the place right now and anything goes and you know i i'm not gonna sit here and be a hypocrite we talked about we talked about like marijuana mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying we talked about drinking and we talked about uh occasionally doing ecstasy or whatever but we did those things like you you know like when you're young you're gonna you're gonna experiment we did those things separately. We didn't sit there and try to do every damn drug ever invented at the same time. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because that's only going to end up in, in in tragedy. You know what I'm saying? Like so, it's like somebody got to get at these junks and tell them, man. You know, like like it ain't like you can lose your life and then everything you worked for to get to this point is done. You know what I'm saying? So it's just, it's just a to me, it's a lack of leadership and it's a lack of positive uh, role models out there. That's 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 not that's that's not scared to step up and not just gonna sit back and scared to be ridiculed because you speak out against what everybody else is doing. There's nothing wrong with being different. Right? Could you talk about? Could you go a little bit deeper into the prison industrial complex and how these labels and stuff? You know. That they buy stocks in it, but they also feed, you know, the prison industrial complex through these artists, and on the back end, um, reap the benefits through the prisons and the, the kids going to prison through the criminality. Could you link that? Entirely? Oh yeah, 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 man. So, so the labels are getting paid both ways. You know, what I'm saying they're they're getting paid off the they were getting paid off the gangster music that they were promoting to the to the uh, to the urban youth, and they were getting paid when the urban youth was, was being influenced by this music, going out committing crimes and ending up in their prisons that they had stock invested in. You know what I'm saying? So they were get, they, they were killing it on both ends, you know, and, 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 and it's the trap. And it, it, it was just a trap all, all the way around. And we had no idea what it was. Like I said, we were simply expressing ourselves in our art form, but they took it to a whole nother level of evil, you know what I'm saying? I say a whole nother level of evil and just 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 had to keep keep their their slave mentality over us this whole time. Through it all, through everything we've done, man, it is they they've always had to have some type of control over what we've done, even if we created it. They've always had to come in and somehow feel like they had to be the 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 overseers or the supervisors of what we do when mm -hmm. we really don't need when we really don't need that because we created it we know damn well how to operate it right how do you how come you don't see because you've seen a lot of hip-hop entertainers throughout time um evolve into a very high tax bracket billionaire status high millionaire status but we don't see that transition in the banks. We don't see that transition in the certain avenues where we know black people as a culture are lacking and we need those certain systems in order to operate properly and just to have some kind of power structure within this game. How come we don't see more of that in your opinion when it comes to the high, higher power up in, in hip hop and, and us as a people? Man, because we gotta we gotta we gotta quit holding back and, and, and calling these people out for what it is. Because people ain't coming together when they get this, when they when they accumulate this, they don't come together and they don't try to educate the people coming from behind them. You know what I'm saying? Like it, it's like it's like if Black Lives is gonna matter, it got to matter all the way around. Mm -hmm. it, it got to matter with the police. It got to matter with black on black crime. It got to matter within the music industry. It has to matter within the entertainment industry. You know what I'm saying? Because you know. I, I really don't like, you know, uh, that word black owned record label re really don't mean nothing to me because like these black owned labels, they don't they don't sign these black artists and they don't teach them the business. They don't teach them what not to do to get caught up. They do the same thing to them that was done to them. 
Yep. Mm-hmm. And they take advantage of these artists instead of educating them. They do the same thing that the that, that the slave master did. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, like we we like we got all, all that has to change. All that has to change. You you have to keep passing it down to the next generation. You can't just hold it to yourself because you're going to die one day. You can't like you can't take it with you. You know what I'm saying? You're going to have to pass this wealth and this knowledge down so it can keep being passed down from generation to generation. That's what other races do. That's what other people do. Absolutely. We you know are. So, so we got to get strong like that mentally for real. We talked about him because during that Nick Cannon old debacle, Diddy told him to come on home to revolt. We had a conversation on the podcast and I said, with all due respect, I met Diddy one time in a, in a nightclub. I was doing a detail for him, but I said he was full of shit. I said, because what has revolt really done for black people that we've seen out here outright? All we've seen is criticism behind the scenes. What do you think about that? Am I too far fetched to think that way when it comes to Diddy and Revolt TV? I mean, um, I, I, I really, I really can't speak on it because I really don't follow really what Puff 